Elon Musk's controversial Neuralink is ready to test its brain chip implant on humans. Musk announced that Neuralink has received approval from an independent review board to begin recruitment for the first human trial of its brain implant for paralysis patients. Launched back in 2016, Neuralink got the U.S. Food and Drug Administration's approval for human trials earlier this year. And now the brain implant company has obtained approval from an independent review board as well. Neuralink can now start its recruitment process for the inaugural human trial of its brain implant chip. Ever since its launch, Neuralink has faced intense scrutiny over alleged animal cruelty, safety hazards, and over-ambitious claims. Musk claims the brain chip interface will one day restore mobility in cases of severe spinal injury, cure Parkinson's, and keep humans relevant in a world dominated by artificial intelligence. And according to media reports, patients with paralysis due to cervical spinal cord injury or Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis may qualify for the trial. The company has not disclosed how many people will be enrolled in the trial. The initial goal of Neuralink is to grant paralyzed patients the ability to control a computer cursor or a keyboard using their thoughts. Neuralink researchers will use a robot to surgically place the implant in a part of the brain that controls movement. The question remains, if required, would you let Elon Musk implant a device in your brain? Have we finally discovered aliens? This question popped up last week, not because a mothership landed on the White House lawn, but because of the remains of these so-called non-human beings that were displayed at a congressional hearing in Mexico. We told you about this. The bodies were said to be 700 and 1,800 years old, respectively. They had just three fingers on each hand and unusually elongated heads. This so-called revelation triggered a host of conspiracy theories, questions, also drew some ridicule. Many scientific experts said the corpses were fake. And so Mexico decided to address their doubts. Mexican doctors carried out some lab tests and extensively studied these corpses. What did they find? That these corpses may indeed be real, that they are indeed biological. The tests were led by Jose de Jesus Zolce Beretes, a forensic doctor with the Mexican Navy. And he says there is no evidence of any assembly or manipulation of the skeletal structures. In other words, the alleged aliens belonged to a single skeleton and were not assembled with human objects. And that's not even all. The scientists also said that one of the bodies was alive, was intact, and was also in gestation. He says there were some large lumps inside the alleged alien's abdomen, which he says could have been eggs. So Mexican scientists say the corpses are real, but does the rest of the world agree with them? Not really. Can biological reproduction ever become obsolete? Well, that's a question that researchers in Israel are trying to answer. For now, it looks impossible to create a human baby without a mother and a father to help, but they have made a striking progress in showing an embryo basically from scratch. This is what a two-week-old embryo looks like, but it didn't come from the fusion of a sperm cell and an egg cell. It was made from stem cells. Researchers from the Weizmann Institute of Science in Israel learned how to reprogram stem cells into cells found in an early-stage embryo. After Jacob Hanna's team mixed them together, a few turned into balls of cells called aggregates, which grew into something that strikingly resembled human embryos. About 1% of the, 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 the aggregates, we can see that they start, cells start differentiating correctly, migrating and sorting themselves into the correct structure. And the farthest we could get is, is day 14 in human embryo development. Scientists in the field are quick to point out that even if the cell aggregates start to look and act like embryos, they're still far from the real thing. The method has limits. I want to emphasize that if you're talking about trying to make a whole baby pregnancy outside the uterus, that is just impossible because the human embryo is very big, 
pregnancy is nine months. So that is not, it's not that it's not our goal, it's actually also impossible and, and there are no um, concerns about that at all. Instead, the goal is to create models that give a better understanding of what happens directly after an egg is fertilized, without the ethical concerns involved in using real human embryos. That could lead to important medical breakthroughs in reproduction, but the technology also takes us one step further into an ethical minefield. Healthcare professionals across the world are gearing up for a new potential pandemic, a pandemic which they say will be known as Disease X. No, this disease has nothing to do with Twitter's new name, neither is it a social media plague. Disease X is a legitimate health scare. The next unknown disease of epidemic potential. This term was formalized by the WHO in 2018. It was named X because of the lack of knowledge about it. It's not known what this disease will be whether it will jump from animals to humans, or whether it will be a mysterious lab creation. But one thing scientists are certain about is this. Disease X is coming. They don't know when, they don't know how. What they do know is that it could be far worse than the Wuhan virus. That it could cause more deaths than the Wuhan virus. And that it could take us years to recover from it. This is how the WHO defined the disease. It said, Disease X represents the knowledge that a serious international epidemic could be caused by a pathogen currently unknown to cause human disease. The R&D blueprint explicitly seeks to enable early cross-cutting R&D preparedness that is also relevant for an unknown disease X. In May this year, the chief of the World Health Organization, the one and only Dr. Tedros, issued a warning. He said, the planet should be ready for a disease deadlier than COVID that a doomsday COVID variant with the power to send the world back to square one is still a big possibility. Four months since this warning was issued, scientists the world over are talking about this. This includes Kate Bingham, who served as the chair of the UK's vaccine task force. Let me now take you through her claims one by one. The scientist says that this disease, disease X, could have a similar impact as a devastating Spanish flu of 1918. Two, disease X could potentially result in up to 50 million more deaths. Three, the disease could emerge from the millions of viruses that are yet to be discovered. Four, it may take scientists a whole lot of time to develop vaccines that can fight this disease. Now, the UK is not taking this warning lightly. As I speak, it's setting up a vaccine development and evaluation center. The aim of this center will be to research and develop vaccines against the world's deadliest pathogens, including disease X. Is the UK the only country preparing for this disease? Not really. There are others, like Malaysia. The country's health minister says that Malaysia remains vigilant about the possible emergence of new pandemics, including the so-called disease X. She made this statement right after returning from the UN General Assembly session in New York. Last we checked, these were the only two countries that were officially taking steps. But as the word spreads, more and more nations are expected to take preventive measures. Now, here's the thing. While preventive measures could help, but without knowing what exactly these measures are aimed at, we'll be like shooting an arrow in the dark. I mean, no one in the scientific community has been really able to say with clarity where this disease could emerge from and what exactly could cause it. And this makes fighting it all the more difficult. Only for prophecy could help us here.